Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And are so far from my cry and from the words of my distress. O oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer. By night as well, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One. Enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our ancestors put their trust in you. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and no man. Scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me out of the womb. And kept me safe upon my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near. And there is none to help. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this that caused the Lord of this to lay aside his crown? For my soul, for my soul, to lay aside his crown for my soul. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Then Pilate handed Jesus over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the Place of the Skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but this man said, I am King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, 
it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Lord Jesus Christ, as we kneel at the foot of your cross, help us to see and know your love for us so that we may place at your feet all that we have and all that we are. Amen. There is an aching stillness now that we've come to this day. A spareness. It feels deep to me and dark and empty, sad and quiet. The death we knew would come has come. There's been a lot of death lately, more than most of us can take in. And somehow that is helping me to make deeper meaning of Jesus' suffering and death on the cross. It helps me to understand why we tell this very hard part of God's story over and over again. The thing that draws us into the deep, dark, mysterious place that is Jesus' death is our own human suffering. And I understand that on this particular Good Friday better than I ever have. As desolate and heartbreaking as this place feels, I think we come to the foot of the cross because somewhere deep inside ourselves we know, or at least we hope, that all this suffering has something to do with love. It isn't something we understand so much as something we feel, that somehow Jesus' death on the cross has something to do with the way God loves us. It's hard to make sense of, really, how can it possibly be that great suffering and death on a cross equals love? I think we come back to this hard story over and over again because it's a true story. It's the truest story we have for all the terrible things that happen in our world. The truest story for what is happening right now. I think we come back to the story because we know that suffering is a very real part of human life. The story is real, just as our stories are real. Anyone who has loved deeply knows how costly love is. When we love with our whole hearts, we get hurt because people are messy and complicated and fragile. Good Friday shows us the beauty of being with suffering and shows us how to do that. Open, undefended, willing, obedient, connected, broken, powerless, empty. There is so very much suffering right now, it feels as though the whole world is heartbroken. And if we didn't have a God who endured suffering as deep and dark and tragic as our lives can feel, as so many lives are right now, we might be tempted to believe that God abandons us in our suffering. What kind of God could let doctors who are trying to save people die? Why would I believe in a God who allows a virus to kill thousands of people? If God allows suffering such as this, I don't want any part of it. These are the heartbreaking questions of the ones who don't really know God's story. That's why we tell the hard part of the story over and over again. We tell it because we need to know in the very depths of our being that God is with us in absolutely everything and especially in our suffering. We tell the hard parts of this story over and over again because when we are willing to stand at the foot of the cross, 
when we are willing to be with or try to be with Jesus in his suffering, we begin to realize that we cannot possibly suffer anything that God has not suffered. We begin to realize that when our hearts are breaking, God's heart is breaking too. I don't believe that God wills us to suffer, but we do suffer. I don't believe that God willed Jesus to suffer or die on that cross, but he did. Jesus died because he never for a moment stopped living as God wants all of us to live, pouring out love for the life of the world. Jesus died the same way he lived, pouring everything out for the sake of love. Even in his dying, he blessed the ones who had him killed. He could have pulled his God card when the taunters cried, save yourself and come down from that cross. But he didn't. He did what you and I have to do when we're in the last place on earth we want to be. He stayed. He stayed and he blessed. In his living and his dying, Jesus really did take every possible human experience into himself and so into God. And he did it all with boundless love. Even in the very worst forsaken place, he loved. And as strange as it might seem, he loved us by staying and suffering so that we would know deep down in our bones that no matter what misery we experience, God has experienced that misery too. No matter how wretched our lives, God will never, ever abandon us. God will stay and God will bless. Death on the cross was not something God did to Jesus. What happened on the cross was something God did as Jesus. God took in all our sadness, our brokenness, our suffering as Jesus. And that was an act of unspeakable love. What happened on the cross made God's infinite love visible in a world that didn't want to look at it. Perhaps knowing that God turned suffering into love will help us to look at it. So you see, suffering and death on a cross really do equal love. We don't have to wait for Easter resurrection to know that life overcomes death and love wins. Even at the foot of the cross, we see glimpses of the kingdom of heaven and the power of God's boundless love. That love was nailed to a cross, but it did not die. Because we live now and not then, we know that. We know there is resurrection at the end of the story and six months ago, we might have been tempted to look past the hard parts or to skip over the suffering and dying. We don't have that luxury today. What we do have is the knowledge that our God came not just to be with us, but to become us. What we do have is a God who can be trusted to plummet the depths of despair with us what we do have is a God who does in us just what God did in Jesus. God incarnates, not just in Jesus, but in you and me too. We are where God shows up in the world. What will happen to us if we don't remember that? What will happen to the world? On Good Friday, God invites us to stand at the foot of the cross and to stay there 
until we know it to be a sign of the indescribable love God can make out of suffering. It isn't easy to look. It will help if we do it together. I think now we are finally beginning to know ourselves to be one with the ones we love the best and the ones we like the least. There is so very much suffering in our world. And when we're willing to look, willing to stay at the foot of the cross, we can see God changing suffering into love. We are learning to stay. Learning to stay in our homes, learning to stay connected in ways we never imagined, learning to stay with rather than turn away from the suffering in the world. That's one of the ways God is redeeming this tragic virus already. We are learning that we really are all one, and that is so very beautiful. Perhaps we'll find a kind of strength we never knew was possible. And with God's grace, we will take our part in transforming the world's suffering into love. Take time this Good Friday to let God's immeasurable love settle in you. Remember that suffering, even death, never has the last word. God transformed Jesus' suffering and death into pure love. And that is why we call this day good. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose most dear son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The first station, Jesus is condemned to death. For politicians, rulers, and government officials who have the power to help or harm that they may steadfastly seek the common good in this global crisis and always work for peace, equity, and justice. For judges and magistrates that they may administer justice impartially and with mercy. For all who have power of life and death over others, we pray, Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For those condemned to death, for whatever reason, for those imprisoned, lawfully and unlawfully, justly and unjustly, for those serving very long or indeterminate sentences, we pray, Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. For ourselves, when we judge others, and for those we condemn, and when we ourselves stand judged or condemned, rightly or wrongly, that we may know the witness and humility of Christ, we pray, Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. The second station, Jesus takes up his cross. For all police men and women, prison officers and those required to carry out harsh sentences. For all soldiers on duty in armies of occupation, in United Nations or multinational forces. For all who make crosses and all who must bear them, we pray. Lord, Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. For those who mock and torment others, and for those who are mocked and tormented. For all victims of violence and those who are violent toward others. For those who live under military rule or occupation, we pray. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. For ourselves, when we mock, insult, or hurt others, when we ourselves are hurt or put down, that any suffering we may endure may bear fruits of compassion, and that we may be preserved from indifference to other suffering, we pray. 
Lord, have mercy. The third station, Jesus falls for the first time. For those in physical weakness and pain, for those who experience physical exhaustion, for all who are suffering from the coronavirus, for those weak with hunger, for those suffering the frailty of old age, for those facing any kind of failure who know what it means to fall, we pray, Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For those who care for the physically weak, the sick, and the elderly, doctors, nurses, social workers, hospital staffs, and families, especially those risking their lives to provide care during the pandemic, we pray, Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. For ourselves, when we face sickness, physical weakness, exhaustion, and when we experience failure, that we may know the power of Christ's cross, we pray, Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. The fourth station, Jesus meets his afflicted mother. In thanksgiving for the example, love, and prayers of Our Lady Mary, we pray for our own mothers and fathers. In thanksgiving for all the love and joy that they have brought to us, and in sorrow for all the ways in which we have hurt them. And for all who have mothered or fathered us, and still do, those living on this side of the narrow curtain of death, and those who have died and are living beyond it, we pray, Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For those to whom we are father or mother, actually, spiritually, personally, that they may grow in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and their fellow human beings, we pray. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. For ourselves, as children and parents, that we may know the love and gentleness of Our Lady Mary and of Jesus our Lord in all our relationships, and that we, like Mary, may keep all these things in our heart. We pray, Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. The fifth station, the cross is laid on Simon of Cyrene. In gratitude that it was an African who helped Jesus on the way to Calvary, we pray for the peoples of Africa, for the nations of that continent, and in every part of the world, who are seeking peace, justice, and freedom. For those who are suffering from war, genocide, famine, and disease, and for international understanding and cooperation and mutual respect between nations, we pray, Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For all who are disadvantaged by their color, race, or beliefs, for the removal of all barriers of resentment, prejudice, and fear between peoples, we pray, Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. For ourselves, in profound gratitude that God finds us lovable and gave his only begotten that we might have eternal life, that we may be free from all prejudice based on race, color, or religion, and be freed from all self-love or hesitation in serving and helping others, we pray, Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. The Sixth Station a woman wipes the face of Jesus. In gratitude for all who see with God's eyes and who recognize love and beauty where we see only squalor and ugliness. For every instance an act of compassion and caring and for all who see Jesus in the most vulnerable, we pray, Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For all whose suffering, pain, deprivation, and degradation makes others turn away. For all who have the courage to show compassion, we pray, Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. For ourselves, that our eyes might be open to see beauty where God sees beauty. That we may be given a heart open to compassion hands ready to serve or comfort and console, 
that others may see in us a true icon of God, we pray. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. The seventh station, Jesus falls for a second time. In humble gratitude for God's mercy and pardon, we pray that mercy may always temper justice. For heads of state, parole boards, and those who have responsibility for showing official mercy, for all who seek pardon and mercy, we pray, Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. For those who suffer mental weakness and fatigue, for the mentally ill, for those suffering from dementia, and for those who care for them, their families, and members of the caring professions, we pray, Christ, Christ have have mercy. mercy. For those whom we have hurt or offended, for ourselves, that we may be forgiving and merciful, and that wherever we see one of the little ones suffer, we may recognize Christ in them, we pray, Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. The Eighth Station Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. For all women everywhere, especially those who have to watch husbands, sons, brothers, partners go to war, and those who mourn loved ones killed or wounded in violence not of their own making. For the women of Jerusalem today, Jews, Palestinians, and Armenians, we pray, Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. In penitence and sorrow, for each time right is obscured by might, and every time the powerful are given undue respect, while the weak and the poor are ignored and oppressed, we pray, Christ, Christ, have have mercy. mercy for ourselves, that the Holy Spirit will give us the mind of Christ to love and to respect the weak and the poor, and to know Christ's dignity when they or we are made to suffer indignity. We pray, Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. The ninth station, Jesus falls the third time. For those who experience moral weakness and failure. For those who know what it is to lose their faith. For those who are anxious or afraid. For those who have lost hope in this world and the next. For those who are at the very limit of their physical, mental, or moral strength, we pray, Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. For those who counsel the despairing and suicidal, For prison and law court chaplains, we pray, Christ, Christ, have have mercy. mercy. For ourselves, when we know moral failure, when everything and everyone seems to be against us and hope flees, that we may remember Jesus awaiting crucifixion and know his patience and his presence, we pray, Lord, Lord, have have mercy. The Tenth Station. Jesus is stripped of his garments. For those who are exposed to ridicule, who are shamed, humiliated, degraded, exploited, for battered women and battered children, we pray, Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. For those who expose, shame, humiliate, degrade others by word or action, or simply in their thoughts. For those who degrade or exploit others racially, economically, sexually, we pray, Christ Christ have have mercy. mercy. For ourselves, when we are ashamed or abused in any way, and that we may so live that we have nothing to hide, we pray, Lord Lord, have have mercy. mercy. The eleventh station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. In awe and gratitude at the mystery of the cross, that God loved the world so much that he surrendered his only begotten to this kind of suffering and death, that Jesus accepted this kind of suffering and death out of love for us, 
so that we might share his life. And acclaiming Jesus as the Christ, our ruler and our Savior, we pray, Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy for those who would destroy the good, the beautiful, and the true, for every attempt to suppress the good news of Christ crucified and risen, and for all persecutors of Christ's church, we pray, Christ, Christ, have have mercy mercy. for those who are persecuted and oppressed for whatever reason, for ourselves, whenever we are called to answer for our faith, that we may understand and use Jesus' way to victory, allowing sin and suffering and death to break themselves on the rock of love and refusing to retaliate in any way. We pray, Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. The Twelfth Station, Jesus Dies on the Cross. For the Dying, for ourselves in our last hour, and in gratitude that because of the loneliness of Jesus on the cross, no one need ever die alone or without hope, we pray, Lord, Lord, have have mercy. For those who care for the dying, their families, doctors and nurses, for hospice workers and hospital chaplains, we pray, Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. For all people everywhere, that we, your family, may know Jesus and share his eternal life, we pray, Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. The 13th station. The body of Jesus is placed in the arms of his mother. For all who have died, especially those whom we have known and loved, and those who have influenced us for good, we pray, Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. For those who mourn, and those who comfort and care for mourners, we pray, Christ, Christ, have have mercy. mercy. For ourselves, whenever we eat the bread and drink the cup of Christ, in gratitude that Jesus gave his body to be broken for us, and his blood to be poured out for us, that we may be enabled by his Spirit to give ourselves to be broken and poured out for others. We pray, Lord, Lord, have have mercy. The fourteenth station, Jesus is laid in the tomb. For those whose lives are without human hope or promise, for those for whom all hope is dead, for those who cannot work through their grief, for the terrible waste of lives for which we human beings are responsible, we pray, Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. For those who feel themselves to be abandoned by God and the human race, unvalued, unwanted, unloved, For those without faith of any kind, we pray, Christ, Christ, have have mercy for ourselves, that the Holy Spirit may give God's patience and endurance, that we may know God's love in suffering, God's power in weakness, God's might in smallness of numbers and power, and God's life in death and that we may never lose faith and hope in God's love and faithfulness, we pray. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. Sing my tongue the glorious battle of the mighty conflict sing. Tell the triumph of the victim to his cross thy tribute bring. Jesus Christ, the world's Redeemer, from that cross now reigns as King. Faithful cross above all other, one and only noble tree, none in foliage, none in blossom, 
none in fruit thy peer may be. Sweetest wood and sweetest iron, sweetest weight is hung on thee. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that, that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Son, Son of the, the living God, God we, we pray you to set your passion, cross, and death between your judgment and our souls, now and in the hour of our death. Give mercy and grace to the living, pardon and rest to the dead, to your holy church, peace and concord, and to us sinners, everlasting life and glory. For with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign, one God, now and forever. Amen. The one who gave me the breath of life is carried lifeless to the tomb. The one who holds the earth in the hollow of his hand is now held fast within the earth. The universe trembled with fear and the sun hid itself when it saw the light of the world sink into the darkness of the tomb. The life-giving seed, human and divine, today is sown with tears in the furrows of the earth, but springing up anew, Christ will bring joy to all the earth. We bow down to your sufferings, O Christ our Savior. Now show us your holy resurrection. <laughs> <laughs> 